Hey yo, we're back live bringing you the best of yet another episode. I am the new kid on the vlog and this is Man Designs and today uh, I'm caught between actually being a bit of a Lex Friedman or giving it, uh, you know, an, an intellectual uh, introduction. Today we have a trailblazer in the podcasting space, a content curator who's given his life to football and documenting everything South African football. Ladies and gents of the new kid on the vlog, uh, welcome it is ETV's very own. How's it, my brother? Awesome for it. Otherwise, I couldn't. Ah, the grand. Yes, Hey, Nkululeko, my brother. <laughs> I had to put that one in there. <laughs> yeah, man. To um, the It Is TV, uh, you know, viewers, I know that a lot of people will be on the comments, um, you know, because, of course, that's a family and yeah. uh, that's the It Is TV universe. Yeah. Um, I guarantee you, I guarantee you 10,000 of them are going to be here. Uh, not in the comments, but to watch generally, but hundreds of them will be on the comments. So I'd like to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm joking. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man, we're getting to find out a little bit more about the person behind Itiski TV, man. Look, um, you, you, you took the not so very conventional route to, you know, putting content out there that has to do with football yeah. and what let's start from the beginning what got you into football yeah i mean i, I so i i grew up in cape town uh, in a place called ktc okay um and in nyanga nyanga is a community where you are most likely going to be mur murdered in south africa yeah. it is the highest murder rate uh, per capita in the country um i grew up i was born in 1990 um, around 96, 97, when South Africa's football was like at the highest level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, winning the African Cup of Nations, yeah. um, there was always a buzz between Kukuleto and Nyang. I have family all over Cape Town. Yeah. Um, so my love for football started there. The 1996 African Cup of Nations, um, I watched all of those matches and I saw for the first time in my life naked adult men because of the joy that they, they experienced <laughs> <laughs> winning the African Cup of Nations. Yeah. Uh, no cap, like I saw for the first time uh, <laughs> adult human beings running around naked at NY78, NY103 in yeah. Guguletu, and in KTC where I grew up as well. So that's where the love of football comes from. I would go to ship -ins, uh literally as a six, seven, eight year old. Yeah. Um, go to ship -ins. There was a ship -in called Guano Rante. Yeah. Uh, go there. I was the youngest person there when I was six years old. Yeah. And that's the only place where we could watch football because yeah. at the time our. Our squad at camp did not have electricity. Oh, okay. Um, so that ship in had a television screen and they had car batteries where they would connect. Okay. Uh, so everyone was there. Like it was football was a community uh, sport or a community activity for us because there would yeah. be like a hundred people, yeah. um, you know, and we'd be watching Ibafana Bafana, watching Chiefs, Orlando Pirates, Sundowns. That's where I watched most of my early day matches. Um, you know, so that's where football started for me. Yeah. And, and I remember that was quite quite an era of football because I can't really say I was very conscious at the time, but I remember, man, like even even the music that, that was being made, there was a song about us having qualified for for um, yeah, the yeah, World Cup. France. Yeah. And then there was a song that would sing about all of the, 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 the guys that played for Bafana Bafana. Yes, Hellman, Kelele, hi, hi, yo. It was, it was a very exciting exactly. time in football. So I remember, man, <laughs> what a time. And then it just, it, it was on a decline like ever since i don't yeah. think we ever even qualified for a world cup since yeah so we we qualified for the 1998 world cup so yeah. uh, castle lager and, and and i think lion lager and black label at the time yeah. they actually had a, a competition where if you open the bottle cap mm. um if it's written cia of france you would get maybe free beer oh. that's how <laughs> that's how much of a big deal it was yeah. um for us to qualify in 98 i watched all the matches three matches that we played but i guess you never opened any caps that had nah <laughs> nah I, I i was always like eh, eh, guys you, you get abused if your parents um so for me i don't come from a very strict parental background i was neglected a lot that's why a six-year-old will be in the ship yeah. at 10 p.m yeah. yeah but literally if you are neglected then everyone abuses you they send you from pillar to post yeah. hey, go dinner, go dinner, go dinner, go dinner, go dinner. Oh, stuff yeah. like that you see guns uh, 
uh, when you are 10 years old in the township because they know that you don't necessarily have parents that can stand up for you because they are mostly drunk. But it's not something that I'm, a, I'm, I'm ashamed of. Like It's yeah. like <clears throat> by the time that I was maybe 12 or 13, I was already street smart. I had seen everything from the first first murder, first time I saw someone. Damn, and uh, this is when you were six. Yeah, like... First, and town is rough. Yeah, like in the townships, people being raped, people... Um, it was normal to see a woman being beaten by their partner and so on. Uh, but back to Ibafana Bafana, there were songs being composed, uh, Ishibo Obo by Penny McCarthy and the TKZ, for example. Um, yeah, but so we qualified for the 98 World Cup, 2002 World Cup. We didn't qualify for the 2006. We hosted the 2010 World Cup. Um, in 2014, we didn't qualify. We haven't qualified ever since uh, for a World Cup. So you could. it's safe to say that that was our golden era. Um, yeah. you know, in, in football uh, with the players that we had at the time, um, you know, and everyone really, even the audience itself, uh, people were interested in watching Bafana Bafana. I mean, yeah. if you can look at the numbers and observe the the, int- the level of interest nationally that people had with Bafana Bafana, uh, that was like the highest that it, it could get. Maybe there was a spike in the 2010 World Cup as well yeah. because we were hosting the World Cup. But in the late 90s, we're 98, 96, we won the African Cup of Nations, 98, we were runners up uh, in like winning silver yeah. and then 2000 we, we won bronze yeah. so it's like yo you were always on the podium yeah. uh, for the e- e- African Cup of Nations so it's like we're yeah. always number one two or three in Africa yeah. yeah but so but ever since that point um, we've always been on the decline but that's where essentially my love for football yeah. came from and then of course there's 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 also a field uh, nearby there um, it's called, a place called the center where when I was five you would watch 17 year olds like when you are five years old a 17 year old lo- looks like a big brother it's a giant yeah. so all the niggas that i that i grew up around in my community when they play against people from other communities you go and watch them and you cheer them on so i've always like loved football from watching it on tv nationally and and, and having a team that you support there and also supporting the niggas um in the local football association and also even when i was 20 i started owning football clubs at that level so i'm a football person overall uh, more than just being an owner or a journalist so you went on to own fo- uh, a football club yeah it's not it's not the most difficult thing in the world to own a football club in yeah. at amateur level yeah. a local football association yes it costs a lot of money when i was 20 um i i started owning a football club that was being abandoned by its owner because it costs a lot of money okay. you need around 10000 rands to run a football club that's like if you want to buy two kits the 2.5 and then you need to do i'm a card with players because in, in order for you to participate in a game yeah. you need a card uh, your okay. players need a card for that. You know, there's so many expenses. You need to pay the referee. You need to pay the gate fees as well. Because in the township, you essentially pay for everything. Yeah. In the suburbs, you know, kids know that they need a 10 rent to enter the gate. Mm. That is covered by you in the township. You okay. need to have 100 bucks. Just in case 10 players don't have that money. Because if you do, if they don't have, then that means you don't have 10 players inside playing. Yeah. You only have maybe five who have the 10 rent. Yeah. Yeah, but because that's how bad the situation is. In South African black townships, yeah, but so you have to pay for that. You pay fifty rands for referees and so on and so forth. So I owned a club. I was a secretary for my football association. Okay. Um, I did my badges, badges, badges at Safa as a coach as well. So I understand tactics. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who watches more football than I do. Maybe in the country, yeah. in terms of like the volume, the volume of matches that I watch. So, what's your range? Um, I, I know your content that you put out there yeah. is mostly um. Premier Soccer League, but what's your range as far as the football that you consume? Uh, is it is it maybe European, Italian? It, it's so obviously Premier Soccer League, okay. most important for me, the South African Premier Soccer League, and then um, it goes to English Premier League, Spanish La Liga, uh, the Major League Football in America. Um, I was watching this morning the the Olympics, the Women's Olympics, and I was watching um, Zambia playing against China. It was yeah. a 4-4 game. You watch the full game. Just want to understand Uti, how far has football developed? What is the gap between us, the Chinese and us? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I also watch South African football players abroad. So I was watching, there's a player called Lars Feldweg. He's, he's a striker for Bafana Bafana. Yeah. I was watching one of his games midweek as well, yeah. live. He's playing in the Korean League, the K-League. He scored and they won 2-1 in that game and I watched that game. And sometimes you would watch the Belgian league because you see a player uh, from South Africa there. Sometimes you would watch the Chinese Super League or the Second League because 
uh, who did not love was there as well. So you would watch South African players playing all over the, the place. For as long as there's a link, I have access to the internet, yeah. I'll just watch a match. And if I had the time to do it, I will watch it. So for me, I watch for different reasons. Yeah. And sometimes I'll read a book and it tells me about a certain club that picks players as, in a certain way. So there are clubs that will pick a player from an obscure place in France, yeah. uh, like Ungolo Kante. Okay. And then they sell Ngolo Kante for like maybe 40 million to Chelsea, which is Leicester City. So you want to understand the club that originally picked up Ngolo Kante, what exactly is, yeah. is it that they're doing to okay. pick up these players? So there's a club uh, called Michelin, for example. It's owned by the same guy who owns Brentford, a club that has, is, is, has been promoted to the English Premier League. Okay. Um, you know, so oh, yeah, did, uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Benham, yeah. uh, he is a master who won a lot of money in betting. Using mathematical strategies, he used the same models to pick up players that are underdeveloped and undervalued. He buys them for maybe half a million and then he sells them for fifty million. So there's a rich, various reasons why I would watch certain things. Yeah. It's not that I'm going to do anything about them, but I mean I've won some money as well in betting. The most I've won was like over two hundred thousand in betting what? because I was using the model that Matthew Benham was using. So there's always a reason. You pick up a book, you pick up a trick. And then you, you, you observe something, you're like, oh, okay, cool, this is how this works. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's pretty much why I, I would watch a football game. Okay. Sometimes you watch for betting, sometimes you watch for learning, but mostly for love. Yeah. And if I didn't ask this question, actually, it would really disappoint the people of the new kid on the vlog, uh, which must subscribe to Man Designs, by the way, and not forget to comment and like. Um what do you think i want you to diagnose what what you think the problem is with the premier soccer league because um in the past couple of years for me football has always i've been introduced to football the same way you were you know childhood you know your parents are are, some of them are even card carrying members of of a branch of orlando pirates or whatever and then and then you know you you, you're kind of streamlined into the love of either pirates or or chiefs Mm -hmm. or in that odd occasion sundowns because i'm from the eastern cape so what do you think is the problem currently why are we why is there such a big disconnect between the the general public in south africa and the psl why can't um, an average Joe like myself sit through 90 minutes yeah. of, of an Amazulu and Cape Town City game? That's a very good question. It's a very difficult one to unpack as well. Um, there's a reason why the NBA, the National Basketball Association, yeah. um, is, is popular. One of the things that they do is model their, their sport around personalities. Okay. Every era, there was always someone. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron. Tim Duncan, yeah. LeBron James now. And what they're trying to do now, they're trying to curate a young, young nigga called um, Uzion Williamson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're trying, he plays for the New Orleans uh, Pelicans, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I've seen him a couple of times there. I think I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, they're curating boots for him as well. Uh, I think Jordan is trying to give him a, a deal or they've already given him a deal. Um, there's also uh, Kawhi Leonard. Um, there's also Yanis Atentecompo, who's or, or just won with the Muliwaki Bucks. Uh, he's just won a title. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that if you don't curate your, your football around personalities and create shows around them, Here's the perfect illustration for it. Yeah. I will go into the football, but just from I because people we we don't know how to characterize who is watching and what they like. Okay, I'm not on Twitter and I'm not on Instagram. I'm only on Facebook, but I know that there was a buzz about Utem Ngosi Lodge yeah. and who he is dating or who he's not dating. I hear that the female is Natasha. Yeah, um, and. People were even trolling on the Pirates to say it's Natasha FC. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tim Ngozi Lodge was the player of the season two seasons ago. Mm. He plays for Orlando Pirates. Mm. Why is it that people gravitated towards him and who, who he is dating? I don't want you to answer that question, okay. but think about it. Yeah. The audience wants to be connected with the sport beyond the 90 minutes. Yeah. The reason why LeBron is LeBron is largely because he's a superstar and I love him. Mm. And also because of what he does off the field. Mm. I know his son's name is Bronny. Okay. I saw him hanging out with Master P because Master P is in music. Yeah. 
yeah. and he also is a son who plays with Bronny or against Bronny. And and, and I guess these are the characters that we live with constantly on your Instagram, on your Twitter, and and we follow their lifestyles and how they chow their money and you know what what destinations they go to after the football. Because because a lot of us and and sorry to cut you off, a lot of us either have had dreams of being footballers, or or look at you know the lifestyles of some of these lifestyles for the rich and famous and we want to you know be like them so so i guess i understand when you say it's 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 more about the game which brings us back to the fact that you know um my dad will tell me about zakaria lamula he'll never tell me about the pirates of the time but he'll tell me about zakar you you know he'll tell me about itaima um um yeah, and all the stories that followed them. And he'll tell me about Uchomo and, and, and what happened in finals where he had to be introduced into the game later on in the game, you know. So so it was more about characters than it was about Even football. As you were saying this, I remember that Uchomo Sona, the, the greatest story about him that's remembered yeah. now is that he was getting married. Yeah, he left. Uh, it was a wedding and yeah. he left his wedding and he went to help Orlando Pirates win a game or they maybe they drew the game. I can't remember the full story. But that's a point. Uh, you need to understand and characterize who's watching you and why are they watching you. Yeah. South African football, you cannot sell South African football on the basis of the quality of what's happening on the field. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's not much there. Yeah, <laughs> South African football ain't shit. <laughs> like, it ain't, uh, and I, I say this as confidently because I, I, I am the one person who watches the most in South Africa. Yeah, and I feel for you, bro. You've said through so many 90 minutes yeah, of South African exactly. football. Yeah, so it, it ain't shit. Like... You can't sell it on the basis of that. And I also, I want very quick segue as well. U Ronaldo, when he left Real Madrid to Serie A yeah. uh, for Juventus, all of a sudden, Supersport bought the rights to the Serie A. Yeah. Because you to rate football uh, uh, around... Uh, this is Cristiano. Yeah, yeah Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. When he left uh, Real Madrid, yes, there are two Ronaldos. <laughs> <laughs> There's an original one. Uh, it was also it was a god as well. But when he left... Supersport bought the rights to show Serie A matches, and people were probably only watching um, Juve games, and yeah. Because of Ibrahimovic as well joining AC Milan, you start watching as well. Yeah, you pick up personalities within uh, teams in South Africa. There is a lack of that. Um, there's always been a Chabu who, who, who get lost and go missing at Kaiser Chiefs, and that was like an intrigue. I remember Unotolo uh, maybe in 2002, I was 12, I will never forget that. She said something to the effect of. Was that her giving the title, uh, the, the, the headline? how she said it. And then she goes on to tell you that Uchabupule is not going to be playing for Chiefs against Sundowns this weekend. And the, the way that she said it was that, you know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's, that's the point about personalities. You know, I'm not saying that players must go missing. But there was always something about personality and we we loved that bad boy thing about him that he would still rock up you know after not going to training and still bang two goals exactly (laughs) yeah and and and, and women wanted to sleep with utabo mot yeah women wanted to sleep with dr kumar and a lot of them did you know what i'm saying and you curate content around personalities and that's why what we do works Mm -hmm. yeah but you can't you can't not know who's watching you and why they're watching Mm -hmm. and the other thing with south african football is that it doesn't realize i'm not even going yeah but I've, I've not even unpacked the on the field i'm not going to do that because we have a limited time to speak yeah. but um the other part the other element to it is that the south african fan yeah. they have a remote they can either go to 202 for psl mm. or they can press 203 yeah. for the english premier league yeah. do you know what's, what's going to happen when they see the better football on the other side, they will stay with the side that has the better football. Yeah. So you are giving them an opportunity to either eat vegetable or eat pizza or yam. Mm. And all day, every day, they will choose yam or pizza. Yeah. And that's the pattern of the consumer. Mm. I think that South African football has not. We have two. We have old people that are running our football, mm. and they create their own rules. And that's how the structure is: that sixteen PSL teams plus the sixteen Great Africa Championship teams. Uh, that's that's what constitutes the PSL. Yeah. Yeah. About sixteen top league and then the NFT and then they make 32 and then they curate their own rules. They decide um, what is the punishment for what and they decide who gets how much money as a result of the grant and so on and so forth. So when you look at the average age of the people that are making the decision, they don't understand much about the audience. It's possible that I could walk up and do a presentation and they would believe me. 
And I think that's what has been happening over the years, that they have been given a, a wrong characterization of what a consumer is and who their follower is. Yeah. The only reason why, the only thing that's keeping people, uh, keeping South African football together is the fact that South Africa is not a developed country. If South Africa had a, a population with the thinking capacity and the robust community of a Scandinavian country, they would really find the, the, the PSL boring and they would not watch it. At because all, yeah. with their time, they would find better things to do. I imagine that's a contract and they watch it because I, I'm, I've been around people who, who, when you show them English Premier League, they think it's too fast for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're so used to the idea of Chiefs, Pirates and Sundowns. Yeah. You know, but if we had a, a more cognitive, advanced population who was watching, yeah. the PSL would be yeah. dead. Do you think Sundowns is on the right path? Yeah, because they are the leader of South African football. They they've won four league titles. They are our our face. Mm-hmm. Um, where where they missing out? I, so over time, young kids get to follow the winners. Mm-hmm. Nineteen ninety nine, I started following Chelsea. I saw them randomly. Uh, a new channel had been introduced to South African free to air. It's ETV. Yeah. In, they were introduced in nineteen ninety nine, and they randomly started showing. European matches. Yeah, UEFA Champions League Champions at the League. time. And then they, they showed Cup Winners Cup, which is the U- Europa League. Yeah. Chelsea was playing a game there and I, I loved them and I followed them. Yeah. Um, but the, I, I bring this up because in 1999, all of my nine-year-old friends were all nine, some 11, some eight years old. All of them were Manchester United uh, fans. Yeah. 2021, chances are there's like Liverpool, Manchester City more now, yeah. you know, uh, because of the success. Sundowns has not been able to convert their success into introducing or attracting new followers, you know. And uh, it's a combination of a lot of things in, in, in the way that you were introduced to football by your father who was an Orlando Pirates fan. Yeah. He also played from Tata Bucks, by the way. Nice one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shout out to you. Shout out to you. You see, so the only reason, I, I, there are many reasons why Mamelo Sundowns is not getting fans, but they should because they, they won four league titles in a row. Yeah. They probably gonna win the fifth next season. It's only gonna be their mistake that makes them not win. Yeah. They not they doing well on the field, but there's something that they're not doing right with regards to attracting new fans, yeah. uh, and that's why maybe seventy percent of the following is Kaiser Chiefs, yeah. and maybe twenty is Orlando Pirates, and maybe five is Sundown, and then the the five is the rest of the other teams as well. Yeah. Because I think uh, I know this because when we curate content. You see the patterns. You see how many people watch when you do a Sundowns video, how many people watch when you do a Paris video, and how many people watch when you do a Chiefs video. Do, do your algorithms tell you where the people are watching? And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking. Sure. Um, I think I think for me, I, I, I deem Sundowns as a team that's probably doing the right thing off the field. I saw they, they recently had a deal with um, some sports clinic in the University of Pretoria where the oh, vice yes, chancellor yes. came and met um, Patrice Mutsepe. That was a brilliant move. That's something the rest of the world's been doing. Because if you want the best doctors, go go to go to campus, basically. Yeah. Um, and another thing that they've been doing is stamping their authority in in a place where they belong, which is Artridgeville and the like yeah. Soshanguve, um, Mamilodi. You know, um, they, they've been showing a lot more presence, and that's why I think for me. Um, over time, obviously, it's not going to be a, a, an immediate shift, but I think I think they've got the right. My worry is that this is not the first time Sundowns has had a streak. Okay. In ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, they won three league titles in a row, and they lost to Al Ahly. Jeez, final. man, your memory, <laughs> your memory is crazy. You, you, well, if you if you want to be successful in the game, you have to be part of the culture. Yeah. Like I can't have another person not knowing these things. Yeah. You know, a, a random fan not knowing these things. Yeah. Um. You know, but. They had a streak there, and then they went to the final of the Champions League. They were lost to Al Ahly. Yeah. Um, you would think that the people that were growing up around the period, seeing them successful, that's how people catch on to things. That's why it's funny when you see, when you hear someone saying they are a Man City fan. Yeah. But that's it. Like they won in twenty twelve. They won their first title in fifty years. Yeah. Therefore, they would have attracted a new breed of fans. Yeah. So, so, so I, my worry is that there is no conversion of their unfulfilled success with. With with, 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 with with new fans. You know, maybe we'll see that in ten years' time. But nineteen ninety nine was twenty years ago. Yeah. Where they won that streak. Yeah. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you should have been able to see now a rise. And the reason why I'm confident about what I'm saying is because I'm, I, I, I have exposure to the numbers. To answer your question, no, we do, it doesn't tell us where people are watching. Yeah, it does tell us, Uti. We have, we have a lot of people, like 30,000 from Swaziland, mm. uh, 40,000. Like, it will tell you, monthly you received 2 million views uh-huh. and 30,000 was from Swaziland. Um, we have a lot of people in the UK as well, Botswana, mm. USA. It's in the tens of thousands. And then, of course, for the most part, from that 2 million you will get maybe 1.5 million views from South Africa. But it doesn't really break it down as to in, in, in Western Cape or in KZN. Uh, but you mentioned something as well that's very important about it, Sundowns being a regional team. I really enjoy going to Etheridgeville yeah, um, yeah. When, before COVID. I really, because you could see, Wuti, there is a sense of community. In and around that stadium, it's buzzing. Yeah. But I think that the club needs to transcend beyond that. Um, South Africa is big and you need to be able to attract someone randomly from Venda yeah. randomly you need to attract someone from Bumalana yeah. um, I, football clubs I, I always say this that unfortunately they, their profession and their forte is to teach players how to play football it's not their strength to go and market themselves because they're not a marketing business yeah. you know and I've read books about how football teams can benefit from outsourcing certain things yeah. to people who are learned and and were and well versed in 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 marketing for example yeah. you know that's why they even outsource in that by yes 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 sports scientists mm-hmm. not clear, like people that are helping them with the players and injuries the person is employed by sundowns but really you didn't get them from playing for another team yeah. you know you had to get them from a a, 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 a university or a, a profession you know okay this person is going to be our dietitian or whatever the case is yeah. i think that maybe football can benefit from getting people externally characterizing who is watching your games and how we can get them to watch more games yeah, yeah but i think that sundowns is the best team in south africa by far yeah. in terms of on the field achievements four league titles is, is, is a record. Yeah, it's, it's never unheard been of. done. It's never been done. We've had Super Sport winning three. We've had Sundowns winning three. We've had Sundowns winning three again. But no one has ever won it four times in a row. And it should convert itself into more people following them. Yeah. So tell me now, because a lot of uh, a lot of the, the guests that we've had on the platform, um, which is the new kid in the vlog, subscribe to Man Designs, <laughs> comment and like, and like in the, in the comment section. section. Um, you know, they, they want to know how to, you know, curate their own content. And, you know, for those of you that weren't part of the conversations that we were having just off air um, or offline before we actually started shooting, we spoke a lot about, you know, algorithms and we spoke a lot about how you curate your content. So it's it's very important to understand, Oguti, you are not going to be on SABC and I am not going to be on SABC. All of us in this room, I know we are, the window is closed for us to be super talented and randomly being picked up by SABC. Yeah. This is our only space. YouTube is our only space. Digital is our only space. Yeah. And eventually, at some point, the gate is going to close. In my humble opinion, and I've done a lot of reading about it, it's not closed yet in South Africa. There's still so many things to be done. You still have an opportunity to create soapies uh, on, on, on YouTube. You still have an opportunity to create... Uh, you've seen uh, Omalume and Olu. Uh, I just don't know their name. MTM sketch comedy. Yeah. Olu and Omalume. And there's another one called Abafana, the boys versus Amanda Mazana, the girls. And I was even surprised to see that a lot of people watch Skin Sam on YouTube. There you go. Yeah. There's so much There's so much space. There's, there's something I was discussing with someone about the idea of reviewing soapies on YouTube because already the soapies have a popularity on YouTube yeah. with an audience as well. So you can be a junior Kanye of soapies. You watch matches. You, you watch soapies at 8, 9, 6, and then in the morning at 7, you upload your impression of what happened on Skim Sam, yeah. your impression. That's like an idea I shared with someone. Yeah. Anyone in the world out there, you can pick it up and implement it. But coming back to your original question, it's very important to understand um, that you cannot just sit here with your friends and talk about any and everything. Yeah. You can do it, but you're going to be depressed when you see only five people watching, yeah. watching your content. You have to ask yourself what is it that people want to in a way I've already unpacked that you've already mentioned it as well you are seeing every day when people get to work try and rationalize it when people get to work they use their work Wi-Fi Mm. to watch the previous episode of Skim Sam if they missed it 
and we can now we can open or skim some even on 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 your phone as you are watching. Yeah. Ubo and on YouTube, how many people have watched an episode of Skim Some? Yeah. Now, how algorithm works is that if when you do a good Skim Some episode, a review, a ten minute review, you say um, there nigga, there's a nigga called E Wallet, there or something like that. Yeah. Wallet. Some shit like that, yeah. I don't, I don't watch. Yeah, I've, I've never I've seen, I've never seen it, but I, I see people on Facebook sharing stuff about what, there's a girl that came from rural areas and then she slept with a guy, but she left a boyfriend back in the rural areas, oh, yeah. something like that. Um, There was something that was trending. Yeah, but, but yeah, but, <laughs> so, so, so there's Skim Sam and there's an audience. That, that means there's a population of people that watch content around Skim Sam. When your next thing, whether you don't even like Skim Sam, go and watch it. Find a way, whether you being vibrant or too critical uh, about it, or you just two 50-year-old women that are talking about what you thought as you were watching with Skim Sam, yeah. talk about it. Yeah. yeah, and, and, and you, just say, you just talk about it for 10 minutes. As long as the camera and the sound is good, and you are good as well. You you are listenable. Yeah. People can listen to you, and you say it in a language that don't use two big words in English. You know, yeah. um, curate that content in a relatable language where people, if they are watching, they can be able to consume and understand what you are saying. Yeah. Maybe you can do it in Sizulu or maybe in Pedi because I, I believe I'm led to believe that Skim Sam is in Sipedi for the most part. Yeah, yeah, but part. some something like that. So that is an opportunity where there's already a topic. With a high number of an audience, you could you could create videos about the same topic, mm-hmm. reviewing that, and because that topic is is, is seen by fifty thousand people every day, there's a chance that ten percent of those people want more of that content, and they could land on you. So you could get five thousand people, and then over time you get five thousand people every day, uh, and then take off days on the weekends. And that's it. Like you have a YouTube channel. Listen carefully. We're talking numbers right now. <laughs> We're getting to the crux of this matter. We're still starting with the numbers of how to attract the eyes. Okay. So yeah, we're still on on it is key TV. Yeah. So so it, with, with with us, it was it was simple for me. The way that I started it is key TV. Um, it was not. It's very difficult to actually tell the story without being too long. But I am of football. As you've noticed from uh, the beginning of our conversation, yeah. there's a point where I work for Soka Laduma, a the best newspaper, the biggest newspaper rather in South Africa in in, in football. Um, magazine, a newspaper, a magazine is Kickoff, but oh, it's owned okay. by the same entity, oh, okay. essentially. Um, I worked there with a partner of mine called Jason Aker. Uh, we were doing a podcast. So Soka Laduma is a newspaper. You open it, you read your favorite interviews. What we did with the podcast was I called the players. Uh-huh. I interviewed them. When you go to the website, you can hear the interview as opposed to reading it on the newspaper. That was, that, that, that was the product that we were selling. And now we did that in one year. Myself and Jason, we, we were calling ourselves Sokalatuma Radio, but we're under Sokalatuma. Yeah. In one year, I won awards. Um, it was popular. We we're getting hundreds of thousands of people to listen to it. And in one year, we we made for Sokala Duma. We didn't get this money. We made for Sokala Duma over one point five million in twenty seventeen. Damn, 1. just the two of you. Yes, it's not a team. It's just myself and Jason. That was Jason's original idea. Yeah. Of Sokala Duma Radio. Shout out to Jason. Yeah, well, he's my business partner now. Um, and we sat down when we we did that. Say the two if the two of us can make one point five million for a company and we don't get anything, and from an ownership perspective, he unfortunately didn't get anything because he created Sokala Duma Radio under the roof of Sokala Duma. So whatever you do under our time Content as a company, belongs. yeah, but it belong a Google. Mm. Yeah. So in that in twenty seventeen, you're popping, you're winning awards, doing well. I had already been on radio as well. We we then decided with Jason, we are going to come to. We were in Cape Town. Jason is from here, but he was he had been in Cape, in, in, in Cape Town for, for 10 years. We're going to go to Joburg, we're going to go and hustle, and we're going to create two things. A YouTube channel and a newspaper. A YouTube channel about football 
essentially that's like I, I went to bed, I slept and I dreamt of it is TV in the way that it was. And that happened because I was the way that it is TV was born, but the journey was that the Sokala Duma journey. Yeah. But the way that it was born was that I had I had done pilots that I sent to Super Sports. Okay. The T V channel. Yeah. Someone undermined me there. I don't take things personally, but if you say fuck you to me, I'll say fuck you too. Yeah. So someone gave me that attitude. They never did say fuck you literally, but yeah. they treated me as like I'm, I'm a nobody. It was an action which was worse than the actual yeah, phrase. <laughs> so, so I was like, yo, I, I've won four awards. I'm better than some of your analysts and some of your presenters. I know this in my head because mm. you have to have that level of self-confidence. I didn't say that to him. But you don't have a haircut like Robert Marawa. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not better than Robert Marawa. I'm not, that's, that's, uh, you must know who's better than you and who you are better than. Yeah. I'm not better than Robert Marawa. I want to ask you just before no, you continue. Um, he, he's better than me um, because of he, he's got better history and, and so on. I'm not even going to get into that. Yeah, but you can still be more There's knowledgeable. No yeah, yeah, no, I'm more knowledgeable than anyone in the country. Top five if, if I have to lend anywhere in terms of knowledge. And I'm saying like if you look at the whole body of, of, of him as a package. Are you are you more knowledgeable and tactical than uh, Junior? Um, I watch more games than him. I've read more books than him. I'm educated than him. He he, he is he's very good. <laughs> yeah. He is very good. They are... Okay, let's speak tactics. Let's be fair about this. Tactics and more precise predictions. It, it, Do you think he makes the more precise predictions or you? Um, because I'm not in a position to make predictions. Yeah. Um, I'm not in a position to make predictions. So... He he he's good. Like he's he's good at making predictions. Sometimes we get them wrong. Sometimes we we, we get them right. But Junior Kanye is for the people. Like I'm not for the people. I'm a geek. Yeah. I'm a geek. I know more things than many people, and I've read like hundreds of books. But I'm not for the people. I know things to know for myself. Yeah. Junior Kanye, the stuff that he knows and says, and the way that he speaks, speaks more to the idea of it's 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 attractive to the people. I'm not even in the lane of thinking whether he's better than me or it's all Villagas is better than me. No, I mean, those niggas work with me, so yeah. I can't even think like that. But to, to, to it is TV came from someone undermining me and I couldn't sleep and then at four o'clock in the morning, I decided this is the idea. It, it happened to me like, I'm like, I'm going to create a football product because a producer from Supersport told me that whatever I was trying to propose to him ain't shit and I was like, I was unborn. Like, you're going to see. You know what I'm saying, and and that's that's how it is. TV started. Now, of course, there are more new ones things about how we got to Junior Kanye. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, when I was working for Sokala Duma, yeah. um, you can work in a, in, a, in an environment and be ignorant, pick up a paycheck and not learn anything. Yeah. But I, I was I was never the type. I don't like working for anyone. I don't like being told what to do. Yeah. But if I'm going to be in a working environment, at least let me pick up something. There was always, you could always see at Sokala Duma, even the audience could see, there was a point where the website at Sokala Duma, it has like hundreds of thousands of visitors per day. There was a point where you could see how many people watched or read each article. Yeah. With Junior Kanye, there would be a lot of people that hated him. Um, but what impressed me was that, oh, okay, when he's speaking, Whereas a random person can speak and 5,000 people could, could read that article. Yeah. When he's speaking, easily he gets 100,000 views. Yeah. So I, I, I write it down in my head. I make a mental note about that, that yeah. if I'm ever going to do anything, I'm going to do it with this person. Yeah. And then I went on to read about YouTube. I opened manuals. I was like, what is an algorithm? How to make headlines? Um, why do people attract... Uh, why are people attracted to one kind of content over another? Yeah. You know, so that's what I did, basically. But... The, the the reason for Junior was that even, he didn't know this, but I told him face to face that the reason why I am here and I am interviewing you as my first ever interview is because I saw that when you are speaking, people listen. They they hate on you, but I don't care about that. I want to open a business. Jason and I want to start a business. Yeah. Can we work together? And you know what? From our first video, so you could open the ETSK TV. First ever video. That I remember ever that done. first video. I watched yeah, it. Well, yeah. uh, I went to Daviton mm. um, with Justice, who is now part of the team. He's always been, he's, he's, he's our cameraman, our videographer. I went with him. And he was also into, because uh, I, I came to Jordan. How did you track him down? No one else apparently was able to track him down at the time. <laughs> because he worked, I was working for Sokala Duma. So he, oh. like, I, had, like, I had interviewed maybe 600 people. Yeah. And I had like a, um, 
a contact list that had 600 people. So I spoke to him. I went to Davidton. That's one of the other advantages as well. Your ancestors and God and wh- whatever. Like, I don't believe in all of those things, but yeah. your the... the the universe will guide you and re- reward you as a result of your work. So whereas other journalists would sit on their phones and call someone, yeah. you know, one of my other big interviews has been Lerato Shabang, yeah. you know, I saw that and, well. and, and, and I get rewarded for that because I call this person and call that person. Eventually I land on him have, and I go to his place. And have, like, have you noticed that... Um, as far as mainstream stream media goes, every time you've had an interview, yeah. there's a subsequent article by another media house about. Because I, I remember you did Lerato Shabangu, yeah. and then there were pictures of him circulating all over social media and and articles subsequently. Yeah. And I think that same happened with with Junior Kanye, yeah. but he had long they'd long been yeah, writing yeah. about him. Yeah. But when you brought him back into the public eye, they, they wrote about him again. Well. Yeah. No, I mean, that's 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 pretty much you know, you're a leader you're a leader that's of the, the thing like, i was about to say that, that <laughs> that's pretty much what i would really like young kids to understand Wuti. it's possible that you could and this stems from the fact that traditional media said gave me a middle finger and i was like now i will show you then now traditional media wants me to work with them and i don't want to work with them because i i'm unemployable like I don't like taking orders from other people. I have people that I employ now with my partners and everything else. But going to, back to, to Junior Kanye, uh, for me, uh, he th- there's a way that he speaks that is attractive to people. So here's another thing that maybe we could l- we could learn from this. He, he, he speaks like it's a group of gents chilling yeah. in the corner yeah. over like whatever drinks they're having and analyzing football. Yeah. That's it. Like th- there is no limit to how far you can take things on digital media. Yeah. You don't have to wear suits. You don't yeah. have to speak a certain way. Yeah. I've never... I've read hundreds of books, but I've never forced him to speak English in a certain way. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, sometimes he calls Ibrahimovic, Ibram Nokovic. Who cares? Who gives mm. a fuck? my brother. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, but he's, he calls a uh, coach who Dylan Kerr, mm. Dylan Clerk. Mm. Who gives a fuck? Like, essentially, if you can just listen to his message... Yeah, and that's Content it. Like you'll pick game. up. Yeah, yeah well, because uh, we're speaking for fifteen minutes. He only says Dylan Clegg on two occasions mm. to a total of four seconds. Yeah. Why is that important? But if he was on TV, they would constantly be pestering him. Because I've worked on TV, mm. they would be saying to his ear, mm. it, "That's not the, how you pronounce it." Or they would yeah. be coaching him. And I, it's the same thing with every other guy that we work with, whether it's Eutugutugumakanya, Umachaka, or Utovilagas. I never, I never put those guys in a situation where. Um, you know, I try and make this look like. Can you please get me uh, into the same room as with Tovi like as <laughs> that, that gentleman looks like my dad. In fact, I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send you a picture now. Nah? I'm gonna send a picture to Nine Designs of my dad, and he'll he'll put it right here somewhere <laughs> and put a picture of with Tovi. Tovi like as is is pleasant to work with. Um, uh, I I don't know, man. Like there's there's something about life that you get humbled so much, so such that that. It, 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 it brings you back to yourself. It's mm. over and his wife Rafilwe. Uh, she's she's such a beautiful woman physically and she's also a beautiful soul yeah. in that she, she was with him. There's so so Vilagaz's career is a rise and fall, similar to Junior Kanye. Yeah. There is a point where he's in uh, Swaziland and is really hustling in terms of playing for you know when you start playing in Swaziland or Botswana mm. in football, it's like okay, cool your career is not going anywhere, yeah. it's fading. But Rafilo has always been there, his wife. And she would call him and like, and, and like, yo, have you reached the studio? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because she understands the importance of where we are now. Yeah. Um, I think for me, my life is a pleasure because I've had the opportunity to, to, to get guys who were literally on the low, on the down. But we've now been able to. Utso Villagas' algorithm was, was low. In the beginning, he used to like get 5,000 views, mm. 10,000 views. Now easily he gets 40,000 views, for example. Yeah. You know, and... And, and and I don't see myself not working with him for over two years, for the next two years or the next three years. Whereas sometimes when the numbers are down and someone is struggling, it's like you have to have an awkward conversation. I've never really had to. Yeah. So Vilagazi is like an hour early. He's pleasant. Like I've, I will never shiver when I receive his call. Yeah. He's pleasant. He's just going to ask me about, yo, um, how about we do something like this? Whereas with Junior, myself and Junior are full of shit. Like, mm. me and Junior Kanye are full of shit. We're, I was born on the 10th of June and he was born maybe on the 14th or 16th. Yeah. We have the same star sign. Yeah. When we when we have a go with it, I love him. Like, there's no one I love more than him in the world except for my wife and my child. Yeah. 
but when we have a, a go at each other, yeah. sometimes it has a potential to be a storm in a teacup. It's nothing, but yeah. it could be something. Like, it, yo, no, but no, it, no, it's not big, it's not a big deal. And then we have a go. Yeah. But I love him. Like, it's like, I, I just know, okay, this is how we're going to deal with each other, but we've grown and, and I've seen him buy his Mini Cooper. I've seen him fix his uh, mother's, car, uh, mother's house. It, the way that we've grown together, through all of that and we've grown to appreciate each other I think we've learned to live with the idea that both of us are full of shit yeah. like in terms of being strong personalities yeah. whereas with Zoe for example and I'm not even making a comparison between the two yeah. I'm just giving the idea that you can't, you can't treat two people two different people the same yeah. with so he's not gonna he's yo that nigga is there one hour before yeah. you don't shiver when you get his phone call yeah. you don't worry that he may not be there all of those guys actually have never not been there all of this we've done hundreds of videos maybe close to a thousand videos yeah. have never not been there because they realize that they're getting popular and they realize that this is bread and this work mm. you know so for me it's a pleasure to be able to one watch these guys play mm. and them being my heroes and then now working with them and sometimes so will call me a boss i'm like yo nick i'm not your boss yeah. you know but of course it, it is that kind of a relationship yeah. you know but i lo- i loved so from the from from the idea that he was such a superstar highest ever goal scorer in the history of Orlando Pirates yeah. to being a person who's so humble, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it, to, to work with those guys is a pleasure for me. Um, but of course, the pleasure goes away sometimes because you are at loggerheads with each other because we, we work together, yeah. you know, and there's a misunderstanding about this and that. But one thing our fans can know is that for me, every single time, it's never about, um, fuck this, like, it's over. The relationship yeah. is over. It's ne- We there all work together. Breakers, yeah. Exactly. We all work together for like two, three, four years yeah. for as long as I think I can do this because I, I'm not going to do this forever. Yeah. I'm 31 and I, I think by the time I'm 40, I want to be a farmer. I want to retire. I don't want to be in Joburg yeah. by the time I'm 40. I want to I wanna retire. Like I, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to work for anyone. If I have 10, 20, 30 million, I'm good. I will live with that for the rest of my yeah. life. And I know your humility will probably disallow you um, like to answer this question, but I do want to find out, do you ever look at yourself? I know you, you've just mentioned that these Oaks are your childhood heroes yeah, yeah. and, and you know, they're they heroes to a, to a lot of us who, who sure. watched because th- th- that was, I think, also prime Orlando Pirates when Oats all were playing and, you know, a very crazy star-studded sure. uh, Kaiser Chiefs when Junior Kanye was playing. But do you ever look back and say... Um, I've had an impact now on, on on these guys' lives, and you know, I, I made a joke about it earlier on that Junior Kanye was coming from not having teeth, and ever since he worked with you, you know, he can smile again. <laughs> he can smile again. Do 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 you ever look back and, and and appreciate yourself for the impact that you've you know? I think in 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 the world, you you don't want to. Well, we have different people who have different ideas of why they are here i mean i'm not a believer but when i think about why i'm here i think about i don't have an answer to it but i always think about if i can just do something that has social impact that reaches people um that a lot of people can talk about i think for me it's mission accomplished that's why as a 31 years 31 year old i can safely say that by the time i'm 38 39 40 I don't want to be here. Yeah. And I, I've seen my life taking that trajectory of, of, okay, this is where you are now. Hopefully, a million people can see you. I, I am sure now a million people have seen me yeah. sticking a microphone to these guys. Mm. Uh, my yeah, but <laughs> for me, it's satisfying to know that I've made an impact with those guys. Yeah. Um, and it's nowhere near where I think I will be. In the next two years, perhaps we'll have 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. We'll definitely be there. But maybe what, what, what is the next thing? Uh, we've had conversations with TV channels yeah. um, and they want to take the, the, the content. But sometimes you, you have these conversations. It's like, yo, this is premium content, so you have to pay for it, for yeah. example. And maybe that's the next thing. But sometimes we, 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 we disagree. Uh, they say, oh, come with a sponsor. And then maybe the sponsor can pay for you to be on air. But I'm like, yo, you have a product here that has 2 million people watching it per month. Yeah. So you should be paying us. You should be sanctioning this to be on a TV station, for yeah. example. But to go back to your question, for me, I don't think about it. Like, I, I, I never think about it. I always say to Junior, and I, 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 we have face-to-faces sometimes where I'm like, yo, this is you. 
when he has teeth, it's, it's him. When he has a Mini Cooper, it's him. Um, I don't want to reveal his other plans, but you can imagine that if you buy a, a, a car, what is the next thing that you're going to buy? Yeah. So we've spoken about that. So when it when, when he eventually does that, it has nothing to do with me mm-hmm. because we have a strict working relationship. Um, yes, we've saved each other's lives. No one knew me before him. Yeah. You know, And when I met him, he was in a different place in his life, but it has nothing to do with me. I always say this to him that, when there's a match, you come and you analyze and you go home. Same with Machaka, same with Tukutuk uh, Makanya, same with Tso Vilagaz. When there's a match, you come and we analyze and then you go home. And then at the end of the month, you get paid. And that's that's a relationship. Yes, it's a loving relationship. It's a relationship full of empathy. We we do appreciate where we come from with each other. Yeah. But I, I do think that we did grow together because it is KTV is nothing without Junior Kanye, for example. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He gets most of our views but it is TV is nothing without me. It's nothing without Jason, my partner. You know, uh, because without our input, no one gets paid. Yeah. Uh, without our input, no one goes around and and gets the the sponsorship. So you know, so it it is it is a, a relationship that feeds. It's a reciprocal relationship where, as a result of your labor, you get money in exchange. Yeah. And then of course, there's an appreciation of the human being behind that as well, behind the labor. Um, in that we are brothers, and we fight. Like I fight with Junior. Like. We fight. I love him so much that I don't love anyone other than my wife and my child than I love him. Yeah. And I think it's because we are we are born like four but days apart. Yeah. We fight when we fight. It's like, yo, but I mean, this is not a big deal. Why are you making a big deal out of this? You know, and, but really, like, it's all love. For me, he's changed my life. And and I think the, the level of understanding you guys have comes to, to play whenever there's an interview because, you know... <laughs> there's this thing he does where he doesn't even look at you <laughs> and sometimes you're the one with the mic in your hand you know he doesn't even look at you all he says but he says Ulego, my brother <laughs> and then he gives his analysis and and here and there you disagree yeah the and one thing that i've had to balance as well was one that's why i meant i emphasized this at the beginning that you have to understand your audience as well who is watching and why they're watching yeah i can't make it about me because largely they're watching for him yeah there are so many things i really want to disagree with for example, he loves the Tumilen Kuni. Um, he thinks Tumilen Kuni is the best thing since sliced bread. We just did a video recently yeah. uh, where eventually we ended up agreeing with each other. But for me, if you have a, a Tumilen Kuni, were you, pay, were you paying three, four hundred thousand and you're not playing him and his contract runs out, naturally it just means that you're not going to sign him. You don't want him anymore yeah. because there are two other goalkeepers you are playing. And this guy is on 400,000. And trust me, I think Tumilen Kune is the best goalkeeper we've ever had in South Africa. But now I'm analyzing this current situation. Yeah. In his prime or in his past. Yeah, he was, he was the best goalkeeper we've ever had in South Africa, in yeah. my opinion, in his prime. But the current situation says that he's not going to be a Chiefs. So the way we get to that point is through persuasion yeah. with Junior when you do the video. Yeah. But... He reluctantly gets there. And I can't make him <laughs> get there. I have to drag him. I, I can't the because I'm, you will see from the reaction that people don't like it when I'm, I'm, I'm taking him to deeper waters, for example, where we are, we are almost looking like we are at loggerheads with each other. You also have to understand who's watching and which context they grew up in. South Africa requires you to understand 30% of content at school in school. Yeah. In order for you to pass and that's the context within which we create content yeah. that human being because becomes an adult human being that cannot understand nuance and they cannot understand robust interchange of ideas between the two adults to them it means a fight yeah. but it's a robust interchange of ideas yeah. but to them it means a fight mm. because their education system brings out an adult that cannot tolerate nuance oh okay and that's okay yeah you know what i'm saying to them why are you fighting? Mm. Why do you think you are better than this guy? Yeah, but in general. So I create content within that context and I'm always aware of that. That doesn't drive how I do content, but I'm aware of it. So you need to understand the context within which the population and the demographic was consuming your content. It's like, okay, cool. Don't take it to deeper waters. You've read hundreds of books. It's fine. When are you? If you meet five other geeks, you can have a conversation about yeah. deeper things and then you can fight for two hours. But in this context, with this content keep it as 
you know, um, you, you don't go deeper into it. Yeah, yeah but keep it as uh, mellow as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, what type of thing. Yeah. So, but it's not a big, it's not a big deal for me because I mean, we do get two million viewers yeah. per month, and that's the most from important thing. From your disagreements, yeah, well, from from those <laughs> things. For me, that's I, I don't lose sleep over that. I'm just I'm just giving another perspective of it, discussing to our viewers. Yeah. There are those dynamics. Creating content is not easy. Yeah. Yeah, but but you also need to understand. Okay, okay. What do, why are these people here? And that's what I was saying. The PSL doesn't understand why people are watching yeah. and what keeps them watching over and over again. Yeah. I need to understand why are these people watching? Why are our fans our fans? And if I can, when we do a radio show at Massive Metro with Junior, if I can speak for that 60 minutes, if I can speak a total of 15 minutes and then 35 minutes is him, yeah. that's the perfect balance. It's just me pushing him, me contextualizing my questions yeah. and him largely speaking. You know, because they're not there to, to watch me speak. Yeah. There will be a time where I expose my presentation skills yeah. in a larger platform. Because I'm experiencing a totally new level. Exactly. Like they've never they've never seen this. Yeah. Because I can't be this yeah. to, to, to to them because they're not there for that. They're just there for Tso Vilagazi talking about his Orlando Pirates or Kaiser Chiefs or Sundowns and that's it. So, you don't get in the way of the content. It's, we only have 10 minutes of... I, we just give ourselves... 10 to 15 minutes because yeah. uh, we can't go on and on and on. Yeah. And after it's after the game, the emotions are high. I need to give them the enough opportunity to unpack how they saw the game. Yeah. And the deal between us and the audience is that they want to see him talking about the game, not me yeah. talking about the game. But there are times where, <laughs> and it's a double-edged sword, there are times where niggas who know journalism yeah. will say to me, why do you allow him to say that this player is from Bosnia, Herzegovina, whereas they're from Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah. I'm like, yo, I didn't have the time to correct that. I know that the player... I know a lot of things. Like, yeah. I know a lot of things. And we're going to lose, you know, the gist of... of yeah, but what he's saying. If, if I get into it... Curated as if it's on television. Yeah, well, if, if, I, if I get into his mouth and say, no, 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 uh, Samir Nurkovic is not from Slovakia, he's from Serbia. Mm. He's losing his train of thought and the people are pissed off because I, I just interrupted him. Yeah. But the, 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 the population, maybe 5%, of the people who are geeks like me, they're like, yo, he doesn't even know football. about They're always looking to pick apart what we do. I mean, there are thousands of comments in our content and there are people that are looking to catch you out. Yeah. Sometimes I make a mistake in the first minute of the video, I rectify it on the 10th, but if they picked it up in the first, they didn't get to the 10th minute because I, I, every mistake I make on the videos, yeah. I will remember that. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I said Bonvenue Evanga was the first hat-trick. The, the first hat-trick actually in the season was Timbers one against Amazon. Yeah. I made that mistake specifically maybe six months ago yeah. and I re- rectified it within, the, within that video. Yeah. But there are people that are constantly looking for mistakes. They don't get to the 10th minute. They're like, yo, this is not the first hat-trick. The first hat-trick was Timbers one or so on. Yeah, but some, something like that. But, you know, so you need to understand the context within which you're creating the content and who's watching and why they're watching. So you don't get in the way of the content. You know that these people are here for Junior Kanye. They're here for Tso Vilagazi. Now, you can be smart all you like. Maybe you can write books if you want to be smart. Yeah. Or you can create a podcast with other smart people, but not for this audience. But there, at It Is TV, I can't be this person, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, a, a, lot, a lot of South African youth is starting to consume a lot of um, English premiership uh not Serie A specifically, but also well, that's a problem for the PSL. Yeah. So, have you have you on, on on the side of your podcast ever considered you know bringing in a team? Oh yeah, yeah. It's like you actually <laughs> bringing in a team like of of, of just a few <laughs> analysts to 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 look at um yeah. yeah and so also, while you answer that, tie into. Uh, the, the the conversation what the future of ETSKT okay. is yeah I mean that's that's it it's like you were eavesdropping on my conversation with Jason I spoke to to him he's my partner um, and the business is like there's more to us than just me and him yeah. you know what I'm saying um, but I, I spoke to him ETSKT is me uh, left right and center I decide what goes on in there I dreamt that platform and I curated it to be at this point yeah. and then Junior Kanye of course makes it popular with his views but then I'm the one who gives birth to some ideas. So this time I'm saying to Jason, yo, I need three former English Premier League because it's the algorithm. Yeah. Every time a single English Premier League match plays, there are people, <laughs> there's like millions of people that go on YouTube to see highlights of that game. Mm. 
they're searching for that game and we headline the the content properly, they will pick us up there. But the way that it's going to work is that I need Steven Pinar, I need Aaron Mugwena, I need Benny McCarthy, and we can't afford it. Yeah. That would cost us maybe every game 20000 per per game. And per month, it would cost us maybe 200000 We can't get Benny McCarthy as a coach now. It, yo, he gets paid a lot of money. But you need people who've played in the English Premier League. That was the next step for me with uh, Itis Kitiri because this thing becomes a franchise. But I still can, feel like there's a lot of young kids that are really good analysts of, of the European game. Yeah, I, I, you, know, you, you could might go not that be route, as popular, yeah, but it, you, you know. You could go that route, but for me, the tried and tested route has been. Like, that's why there's a lot of people like, I have 3,000 unanswered messages here. I could show you if the phone was on, but there's a lot of young kids who want to do punditry for PSL. But I'm like, even myself, I know the PSL, left, right, and center. But I, 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 don't, I don't do a video doing punditry, even though now I'm recognized by the audience. Because the model is that you take a trusted personality and you curate content around it. You make a good point that you could get a young kid analyzing the English Premier League yeah. and maybe you could get an audience for it. It could take you six months to a year to build it. But for an instant hit, all you'd need to do is to find the money to get Aaron Mugwena, anyone who's a former EPL name, a recognizable name. Maybe if JJ Okosha was still here in South Africa, but yeah. he he's not really a good speaker. He speaks in a monotonous way, like he speaks in one tone. He's not excitable when he speaks. But you, Where's even, Lucas Radebay? <laughs> Lucas, I'm sure he's, he, he costs a lot of money. Lucas Radebay is, is a monumental person, is a, a hero. I heard these he's kids a, named after him yeah, but in and, Leeds. And, and even, even there's a, there's a bus... And he was given the key to the city in Leeds, so you wouldn't be able to give him a th- five thousand, which is a hell of a lot of money for a two-hour shift. Yeah. You would need like fifteen thousand. You know what I'm saying? And who knows if he's still following? And the, there's so many dynamics about uh, being able to get this right. Sometimes you have an, a good idea about Stephen Pinar being able to help you out, and you paying him five thousand to come and do it, um, but he doesn't follow the English Premier League anymore. And I know Stephen Pinar has the same problem with JJ Okocha. He speaks like this. If you were listening to his sound wave Monotonous. or watching it, it's, 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 it's a straight line. Yeah. With Julia Kanye, it's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. whoop, whoop, whoop. It's like, Ulego, my brother. Yeah, well, it, it, the, the emotions are up and down. That's why you appeal to people. Yeah. But you are, you are correct. You are probably correct that I agree with you, but I wouldn't do it. But I agree with you. There's probably, because a, a lot of South Africans, coloreds, uh, Indians, and, 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 and the whites, they watch largely English Premier League. Yeah. You could have and they're very good at fantasy football as well because they really just watch English Premier League. They don't have the burden of us watching two leagues at the same time. Um, you could have three of them analyzing within a studio environment, uh, not on Zoom, studio environment, analyzing matches. And that's another product. But for me, that was the next step for it is TV. We spoke about it, but the problem was the money and the availability of the players. You know. So are you willing to... to, to I'm not going to do it with... I'm talking Start a about competition. No, no, no. I can't do it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm very. I, I know what works and what doesn't work. Okay. This will work on the basis that it happens over for over twelve months, meaning that you you have to accept that you don't get income for twelve months, yeah. and then maybe in the thirteenth month it kicks on, or it could stay stable. What 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 I mean by working is that there's a difference between getting four thousand people loyally watching you. But that doesn't pay, and being it is TV, hundred thousand subscribers, getting fifty thousand rents from YouTube only, yeah. and you, I'm not even mentioning world sports betting and other things that we're doing. Yeah. But from from two million, you get fifty to sixty thousand uh, rents on YouTube, meaning you can be able to pay this and that and this, and then supplement with the money that you're getting, which is more the money you get from uh, whoever hops onto your platform, whether it's Nike or World Sports Betting. Yeah. Then you get a little bit. That's uh, like three times more. Than what you're getting from YouTube, so you could do that, and at some point it, you will start being frustrated when you're doing it with unknowns. But easily, because Steven Pinar already has an algorithm, and people identify with him. So the reason why this works, and this is the, the messed up thing about knowing things but not knowing how to explain them. Yeah. The reason why this works is because a global audience, not limited to South Africa, could watch it, but they're not going to be attracted to watch it if they don't already know who you are. So the reason why it works with Steven Pinar is that, oh, I know this guy used to play for Everton. Yeah. 
what are they doing now in South Africa? But the way that you headline it is like Everton 2, Manchester United 3, Steven Pinar uh, reaction, or you just say whatever his headline is, or um, or like an Solskjaer must go, something like that, Solskjaer must go, and then you, you, you put it Steven Pinar, and then they will watch it because on the thumbnail they can see a face that they recognize. Now you have a global pool of people who could watch you, whereas if the same thing happens with you or myself in it as the analyst, it's not going to appeal to the global audience. Yeah. The reason why I wanted to do this is because I saw the potential with a Chinese, uh, with a Japanese, with a South American, and the European. The potential of getting 5,000 from each and pulling that and making it maybe a 40,000 from the get-go. Yeah. That's, how, that's why our first ever interview with Junior is like over 100,000 views. Is because when I look at it, I look at the numbers, I know why we're gonna get to 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 hundred thousand. The reason why you're not gonna get to a hundred thousand views, even fifty thousand is very good, or even ten thousand is very good, is because you are not an identifiable name. Yeah. Yes, Arsenal Fan TV um, has created personalities over a period of time, yeah. and largely because Arsenal as well were crumbling at the same time with Arsene Wenger out campaigns and stuff like that. So over time, we ended up knowing who is um, DT, you know, or Ty, or all of those yeah. guys, and Robbie. Well, that fan that always used to swear at Wenger. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, exactly, it's DT. Yeah. So we know <laughs> all of those guys. Yeah. Um, because over a period of time, they've built up to that point. You know, but at the beginning, it wasn't a, as big as it is now. But now they've done billions of views. Jeez, over man. a billion views. Yeah, yeah but, but it, it works slower if you do it with unknowns. Yeah, but and that's that's maybe that's the next step for 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 us. Maybe um, we'll do campaigns where a visa company, visa or telecom says we have a women's championship uh, sponsored by telecom. Can you guys cover this or Glad Africa? Then I will get someone um, who is an unknown presenter with Porsche Modise, who's a friend of mine, um, with other former players were women and that's the next thing yeah. you know but of course it's not going to get it's going to get maybe 5,000 people watching it yeah. but maybe Telcom will be happy with that yeah. um, without us spending additional money to promote it it will get naturally 5,000 people from our 100,000 pool mm -hmm. to watch it because it's women's football it, only 5% maybe people will be interested in that maybe that's the next step and even in the Glad Africa Championship for example if we cover it it will be because Glad Africa is, is putting money on it is key to help them cover it with our audience and I will get someone to cover it. And maybe occasionally when there's a big game, myself and Junior and so could do it uh, for the sake of the sponsor. But it will be something that pays for itself. It will be Glad Africa coming to pay. And that's how companies work, media companies work. You come to a media company, we know that you have an existing audience of 100,000 people. Can you make the NetBank Cup bigger than what it already is um, by creating more shows about it? Yes, can you do it? All right, and then this is the amount that we pay. Maybe two hundred thousand over two months. Maybe three hundred thousand rands over two months, and then we curate content for that. That's the next thing. But naturally, whenever there's a football game playing, Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns will be there. Or if there's a cup final between TTM and Chipper, will be there like we were, were there last last year. Or a semi final between Super Sport and Celtic will be there. But for as long as the bigger teams are playing, we'll be there covering matches. We'll only go to the smaller ones if they can pay for themselves because it's a company, you know, and it costs money to be able to cover the matches. Kulego, okay. my brother, before we let you go now, um, firstly, I, I just want to really thank you, man, for um, not only being knowledgeable, uh, because that's that's we, we must pay homage to the people that have decided to consume knowledge and, and put it out there for us, but also for your willingness to, to share the knowledge um, that you've consumed. And uh, for the larger part, you have made conversation about our own league, you know, that, that is off us, that when we watch players, you know, we see people that look like us. You've made it a, a bit more popular than it, what it already was. And, and, you know, you have the impact that you've brought. And before I let you go, I just want uh, to find out from you, what's your message to Kaiser Chiefs fans? <laughs> so worst thing you can ask me. Given the current yeah. season, just before we close, what is your message currently to case the Chiefs? I don't fans? know. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I mean, um, I don't know. Uh, In light of what what transpired, because I mean they were very hopeful, man. Oh, the Kev Champions League, and I mean I don't know. Like you know, the strange thing is that we cover Chiefs 
on the platform because you know if Amazulu gave us a hundred thousand views, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, the club went to the Cap Champions League and uh, they went as far as the final. But really, to be honest with you, uh, we watched all of those games and nothing suggested to us that they were gonna get to that point, and they did. But you always knew that uh, there's going to be a big result against them, and it happened in the final. Um, yeah, Stuart Baxter was a coach at Kaiser Chiefs for uh, three years, if I'm not mistaken. He won in 2013 the league. In 2015, he won the Netbank Cup and the league, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's the last time they won anything. When he left the club, um, he left them with a squad of over 30s. Jeff Mashamayete, Morgan Gold, Sibone Soka, Klasipuwa Shabala, Renele Lissolonyane, Kingston Carter. He left them with a lot of over 30s. And the club had to then release a lot of those players. Some of them went, followed him to Super Sport United. Um, Kaiser Chiefs have not won anything since then. Stuart Beck said the reason why they didn't. Because he, he curated and molded the squad um, around over 30s. Yeah. Um, he's coming back now. And you can see with some of his signings as well that, okay, this one is old, this one is old. And some of them are young as well. It's possible that he's going to win something, um, a trophy or two. Uh, it's also possible that if he does it with a desperation, uh, because Kaiser Chiefs, I've never lived in a period where Kaiser Chiefs have not have not won anything for six years, going on seven, yeah. and that's not okay. That's unacceptable. We can fight on social media and write comments. It it means your your standard is low. Yeah. If you can defend Kaiser Chiefs for not, for, even though they haven't won for six years, it means your standard is low and you don't know anything about Chiefs. That is like that's that's our face. Sundowns, I, I I boldly say Sundowns is our face, but in reality, Chiefs is our face in terms of the history of that club and what way it should be. Where now you are standing in the way of progress if you don't like being told that it's unacceptable for that team to not win anything. Yeah. In six years, Barocca won something in the six-year period. Uh, TTM won something in the six years. There's so many other teams. IX Cape Town won something in the six-year period. Teams that died, TTM is, di- is dead now. There's no longer a team called TTM. There's no longer a team called IX Cape Town. Yeah. And in the same period, Kaiser Chiefs have won absolutely nothing. So I think for me, it's not a, it's not about you being hurt about the comments and you not dis- not liking the comments. It's about the standard. Um, you know, just know that you are following a Kaiser Chiefs, which was an incredible institution. Black and gold in the 90s, uh, they used to win any and everything. Last minute, they are losing. But they come back and they win matches and they win trophies. They win two trophies per season. Operation Fat Alice 2001. They win everything except for the league title. That's the that's the team that you are following, and that's the context within which we create this content. And we know the team. Uh, don't allow it uh, to be at a level where um, it's like it will never be acceptable for Manchester United to be where they are. And they will always expect exp- the fans will always and expect. And you'll feel the discomfort from exactly. the fans. Yeah, yeah. And for nigga being the end, like you must say, yo niggas, what's happening, yo, yeah. yo, yo? This is not the Manchester we signed up for. Yeah. And you shouldn't be offended by other people telling you that this is not the kinds of chiefs you signed up for because we've been here. We are historians of the game. People like myself are here to remind you that this is the game because there is a lot of fans who consume the game. Uh, in between them drinking alcohol and they watch matches half drunk. Um, they remember sketchily that in 2002 they won something. I can't even remember what trophy yeah. it was. People like myself are here to tell you that in 2002 maybe you won the BP Top 8. Maybe you won the APSA Cup. Maybe you won the Castle Premiership. We'll tell you. Iwisa Cup. Iwisa Charity Special. Rothman's. Yeah, but Rothman's Cup <laughs> in 1998. Exactly. We are here to tell you, Guti, who are you following and what yeah. is the history. You know what I'm saying? It's like someone marrying a supermodel and then in five years time forgetting that they got married to a Miss Universe you can't marry and forget that you've married after five years just because of course you've gotten used to the idea of being with this supermodel you've slept with her hundreds of times you fo- mm. she is still Miss Universe Yeah, Kaiser Chiefs is still Kaiser Chiefs so yeah, yeah. that's why I was reluctant to actually answer this because I'm very passionate about that club I'm very passionate without revealing a lot of things, but I'm very passionate about that club. Yeah. Away, man. Thank you so much for coming yes, through. Sir. A big shout out Freezing. to you. Lego, my brother. A big shout out to Dalumzi for uh, this uh, regalia that we have on. It's called Diding. Uh, I think it is available on all social media platforms and we'll try and give you uh, contacts on the link. Where can people find you? 
um, on Facebook. I'm going to go on Facebook. I've been banned twice by Facebook, but it is TV. You can find you can find it is TV. Uh, we have 167,000 followers. It is TV on Facebook, and then it is Times, our newspaper on Twitter as well. Away, away, and we are still on YouTube as Man Designs. Follow me at New Kid underscore T forty five on Twitter and New Kid Vlog on Instagram. Thank you so much, Kulego, my yes, brother. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> nice one, nice one. Nice Thank one. you so much. Bro. Ah.